um, born in Rottenmann here in uh, Styria, and uh, was uh, then living in Leibniz, not very far away from here. And um, then at the age of 17, I left Austria and went to Cremona, Italy to make the violin making school. And uh, actually I, was, I thought I will immediately go back home to Austria. And how you can see, um, you, you didn't know that I'm from Austria, but I'm still living and working in Cremona, Italy. Um, I worked a little bit in the United States with uh, Greg Alf and Joe Curtin, and then uh, it didn't work out with a green card, and I came back, opened my workshop quite young. Afterwards, now when I look back, it was very, very young that I opened immediately my workshop, but it was at the time a, a important step, otherwise I couldn't have stayed on uh, in uh, uh, Italy. Um, the first years I only made my master instruments, and when I say master instrument, then I'm talking about an instrument which one person gets the wood and starts from the very beginning all the way to the very end. So there are two master instruments. This one is a copy of the Montagnana Sleeping Beauty, a cello which I made. We're talking about 62,000 euro. And this is my master violin, a copy of the Guarnieri Isae, okay? So you just have a little bit of idea, price range. Here we are about uh, 32,000 uh, uh, euro. And then I have a, a quite a big shop, a workshop, and I make uh, different lines of instruments. So now I don't have all the instruments lined up, otherwise it's getting boring. Um, this one is a, what has been an idea of about 25 years ago, and I even have it also as a cello. Scala Perfetta is the name of it, and that's an entry level made in Germany, uh, European made, and then I finish the varnish and do the setup. Not myself, but I have employees and people working with me. And then popped up the idea that we make something a little bit more affordable, let's say, because not everybody wants to spend master instrument and I started to make this linea Maki and Maki, that name CCH is like a CK in German, um, is the road I'm working in. So actually it's only a, an instrument which all the makers in my workshop together, we create this kind of instrument, okay? Um, don't want to go too much actually in what I'm making that you can also see on my web page. I have lots of uh, things I've done, especially on my YouTube channel. Right now I'm recording and putting it on my YouTube channel as well, so people who don't know me can enjoy it, what I'm doing. Um, today, I'm, I was being invited to come here to hold a speech, and I was thinking, what's, what could I do last time? I, I, Helen uh, met me in Cremona, it's her effort that I actually wrote them what I'm going to talk about. She had the idea, Edgar, you have to talk in Graz. At that time, I didn't know that the ESTA is actually founded in Graz 50 years ago, and I'm very happy that I'm here today. Um, at that time in Cremona, I was talking about the setup and how to maintain, and this is somehow, a, from my point of view as a violin making a little bit, a, too often we hear this kind of speeches of violin makers and I didn't want to make it this boring. So I thought you are now violin teachers and what could be interesting for you and what could be something new, especially new for you. Now when you have time later on and you come back home and you check out my YouTube channel, you will see there are hundreds of videos where I'm going into very, very tiny specific details of what makes the result of all these tiny things, a perfect sound, okay? And uh, over the years, I don't play myself violin, not even the cello and not the viola. And uh, please um, don't, do me, uh, don't insist that I have to play for you the instrument. But once I finish an instrument, I certainly take the instrument, I take the bow and I adjust the sound, okay? This is, uh, but I'm happy that you didn't hear how I do that. Um, over the years, I was actually surprised how people show up searching on an instrument, on a better instrument. And uh, Stefan, everything okay? Okay. He's my cameraman, cameraman today, my brother. 
thank you. Oh. <laughs> um, now, I was impressed that people actually, at the time they come to me and they show me, let's say, a problem, a mistake, or something that they want to get rid of, it seemed to me that they, for the first time, they actually are listening to their final result, their tone of their sound of the violin. And then over the years, I actually understand it also that as a teacher, like the speech before me here, very professional, and I even learned also something. It was about online um, um, courses, online teaching. There's always something we can learn always. Um, it was all about teaching, right? And something violin teacher, cello and viola, double bass, all both in string instrument, that's my uh, area. Um, I discovered that a lot has been invested, a lot of tricks and tips and fancy things of how you can teach it in a more efficient way. But I had the impression that musicians, teachers don't know actually, do not know how to choose an instrument for their students. Now, as soon we talk about this, you are now the ones, the lucky ones, because you are signed up at the ESTA European String Teacher Association and you are willing to learn something new. And I hope I can give you something new you can bring back home. The point is that when a child starts to play, the first thing is the price tag, okay? The size and the price tag. Or it's too expensive and, te and parents are not willing to buy, uh, to buy it, so it will be rented and they get whatever it is. And in the very first moment, the first time you put a bow on an instrument and this small child, five year or 20 or 30 years, is all fancy. At least that's why I made this profession. I'm the fifth of five children and everything which made noise was great. But at a certain point, they, these kids are growing up. They qualify for a bigger instrument mainly, or if they immediately start with a full-size instrument, they're already in the next step that they want to, be, to get something better. And at that point, that, that step from the actually the full-size instrument, it all comes down that that instrument is actually um, crucial for that student if they get the satisfaction of this nice sound. If this instrument, usually the teacher tells them what they should take, is not corresponding to the expectation of the young student or musician, it very likely they don't have this pleasure to keep on going because they don't have this satisfaction that something comes out out of this instrument. Now, Marco's string uh, company or uh, Severino with the rosin, they certainly say, yeah, well, they don't have the right string, they don't have the rosin, and you should have used that one, and then it would be responding easier, or it's, this string is like this, and what, kind, what of sound uh, do you want to uh, create, and uh, how do you identify, and things like this. It's all true, but you have to split up the final result, the sound of an instrument, and explain it that way, or at least I explain it to people who come into my workshop. It's a little bit like buying a statue, okay? And now you want a new statue. And that statue, beside of the size, we, we figured that out already. We have the color, the material, steel, wood, whatever, you know, plastic, whatever. And then what will it be, this statue? And with the violin sound, now let's, I talk about violin, but I actually include viola, cello, double bass. It's actually always the same issue. You have to come down and say the character of sound, focus on the character of sound, because as a teacher, you certainly always give this advice to your students because you think that the character of an instrument you like will be the same as your students will like. Comes pretty close, your students will be very much influenced of what you tell them and you communicate them what is nice, but actually you should actually more leave them 
this uh, matter by themselves. So then let's say they have a few instruments they would prefer in character. Maybe they talk about that it should be a little bit more uh, warm, focused, uh, brilliant. They talk about in this beautiful E string or a, a, a deep G string. And immediately when they talk about things like this, you get already a picture of a character. Now the character is one thing, but then you as a teacher, you are the only one who can actually um, uh, locate exactly on what level is your student and how much should this instrument now respond. And the biggest issue actually on both instrument is the response. Uh, Response is one thing, okay? This is just, the, the, that's the, the first thing. It's like the first impression for, for like you see a, a new car and you say it's red, okay? It's more or less, certainly you see a violin, you say this one is red and this yellow. Now let's put the colors away. But if you take that instrument, a violin in your hand and you, you put the bow on it, that's a little bit like when choosing a car, the color, you know? It's immediately if it responds or not. And then once it is responding at the level of that kid or young student, then we can talk about other things, okay? For example, if the sound is equilibrated, if the E and A string is stronger, or the G and D string, the, the third and the fourth string, then you can juggle with these two, or you can also juggle to make the first and the fourth string stronger and the other two strings uh, in the middle less or up, and you will find that that's sound adjustment. And that's something I think you will not be now able to do that, okay? But if you just focus on the character and you talk a little bit with your students, and on the other side, you figure out how the response is, then you're actually a super teacher, okay? That's what I think saw over 40 years of violin making. 40 years, yes, 40 years. Huh? I'm 57, no, 56, 17, yeah, no, 40, close to. Um, now, this is the biggest part I have prepared for this speech today, all the rest took me alive. And this one took me just uh, more time to figure out how I can print a nice design of a bridge on six paper, uh, sheets of paper to design it like this. But I figured it out how you could with the help of my employees and my partners. And uh, now this is a violin bridge, okay? And um, I could have made better. Because actually, now we're taking here a violin and we cut it like this through, okay? All the way straight through. So then on one side, inside on the top, underneath the deepest string, and it is glued inside parallel to the G string, we have the bass bar, okay? Um, Here is the bass bar, okay? The bass bar is something very stable. And now this is now the part where you can see that I was not completely prepared. I had some great ideas how I can prepare better, but let's say inside you know about the existence of the bass bar. And some people, once they discovered the bass bar, then everything is, the fault is the bass bar. It's not like this, okay? It's, it's a little bit more complex. Now this one here is like standing for, no, we, we make it like this. How can I do that? Because then it's, it looks like a sound post. I don't want that. But here, yeah. But you know what I mean, right? Uh, this is the point, okay? Now here we have underneath a long bar, okay? Like this, okay? And on the other side here, we have the sound post. Actually, at night I couldn't sleep about this speech because I was thinking that I should here make like Velcro and then I make and then it's hanging here like this and things like this. But it's okay. You understand what I'm doing here. Now, this is the sound post. And 
This one is the base bar. Now, the base bar doesn't stand, it is like this, and it goes like this. This is the movement the, the bridge is doing. It's one of the movements, okay? We don't go too much into science, otherwise it, it, we, we will not end today. And the whole thing we're talking about here is actually the distance of the outside of the bridge foot towards the edge of the base bar where it is glued inside, okay? Now this is very simple to say, but if you have now a ready-made violin, you say this is the work of the violin maker. It's true, but I think if you just want everything under control for yourself and for your students, I think you should a little bit invest time I don't say you have to sound just now the instrument, but you should actually be able to understand where is now the bass bar, right? And I have created something just for that. It's a sound adjustment kit, I call it. And inside the sound adjustment kit, which is available certainly online, but even here I brought them, I, I pour it now out, everything I have here. A meter, okay? Edgar approved. You're laughing. You have no idea what is available out there. This one's here. The tip has to be a little bit loose, okay? If it's not loose, it can't be correct because a meter is made that you can measure in a room and that you can measure by on the other direction. And so this thickness of the material has to be moving part, okay? And so with this one, we can measure exactly the position of the bridge. Now, you don't have to do that on every instrument, but if it's a full-size instrument, that measurement is 19.65 millimeters. Wow, that's the first time that you have half of a millimeter to watch. But believe me, if you have now, without glasses I don't see anything, but with the glasses at least, if you put now, it, what counts is the side where your hand is. The side, this side is the side which counts, all the rest compromises and yeah, but I measured on the other, no. This is the side because this is the side where your hand and your student's hands will touch the edge of the violin and this is what it is. You put this here and you go down and you measure along up all the way to the bridge and then it is 19.6 and a little bit more. We hope this is fine. Let's call this a little bit more half a millimeter, okay? Once, on the big, on the, including the bridge, on the back side to the bridge, yeah? So there are some people who say, no, Edgar, this is not correct. It has to be where these um, notches of the F holes are. Forget it, okay? Forget it. On a full-size violin, it is 19.65. That means that you will result a perfect string length, 32.8 centimeters. That means you go, I, here I, I don't start like this, I usually put like the 10 centimeters on the, on the upper nut and then I go down and then you can measure here and you see now it's 42.8, so it's 32.8 centimeter. That's a full size violin, okay? Once you have that, you say, wait, is everything perfect, okay? Then in the sound adjustment kit, here I put it here so then you see everything which is inside. I have also a small ruler, okay? If you get it, you just say, well, 99 years for a ruler. But if you don't have it, it's very difficult. Then I put this ruler on the back side of the bridge and I put it against the feeds. Nothing will fall, you don't adjust anything. You just check it and then you compare where it goes this line on this corner and this one and you amplify 
the matter if this bridge is straight or 90 degrees to the center line, yes or no. And I've never seen a violin which sounds its best way if the bridge is inclined on the feet, okay? So you put this ruler on the back side to the, and you say, wow, yeah, that's straight. He did it very well, okay, no problem. In case it would not be, you can use this ruler. Now I don't want to move here, but you can, you can slightly, slightly, tack, 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 tack. You can move it a little bit with one feet or with another one, okay? This is how I use this ruler. Then what else do we have? Inside here we have even a mirror. Inside, let me see here. With the mirror you can start your discovery inside the instrument, okay? If the instrument is made in my workshop, I have lines inside. But I don't want to go too much into detail, otherwise we stay here for a week. On my YouTube channel I have a video about the right sound post position, a video which has been seen like 100,000 or 90,000 times and I think it could be of interest. At least with this uh, mirror you could look inside and for the first time just discover what's going on. Now for your students, in order that you know where it is referring to this edges of the bridge here, of the bridge foot. I have another small tool which I um, created. Actually it was Karl Becker, father who passed away let's say eight years or something in Chicago, who had these small tiny tools out of bronze because it's a little bit stiffer than Cooper or uh, uh, brass, it's, it's bronze. And we bend it like this and then we adjust the two tips in a perfect way. It is very, very tiny. And it gives you the opportunity to go inside and then touch where the sound post is and touch where the bass bar is, okay? Now, as soon as you put this one inside, you immediately, you don't even have to measure and leave the measuring to the violin maker. You see a certain distance of the bridge foot, the outside to this um, tiny, uh, where it's blocked. There's the base bar underneath, blocking it on the underneath side of this small jig here. And then you go to the other side of the sound post and the sound post should be exactly on the opposite side, the same position, okay? That would be, so if we have here, let's say, one finger and then is it where the, it stops with this tiny tool, then the braid, the, the sound post on the underside, or here now the way I messed it up, sorry, here's the sound post and here's the, 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 the base bar. The base bar, we have difficulties to get it out and put a new one inside, right? But the sound post is, a, is actually a post which you can move around. Now it's, it's a horror scenario if you think about, oh, oh damn, the post fall down. Huh? Yes, certainly, I don't want that, of course. But at least before you see a violin, which doesn't really sound very nice, but it is uh, looking nice, and then you discover that the sound post is somewhere here, you know at least that you have to go back to the violin maker and in some climate uh, areas. Now, I, what pops up in my mind is like the worst I've seen is Korea. Uh, in winter, it's extremely dry and in winter and in summer, it's extremely humid. And this humidity change causes that the sound post is moving, okay? So if that is the case and the sound post is too much inside, the entire instrument won't sound very big. But now the point is we want to come back to your students and how you can figure out um, what to do for your student. Now in the sound adjustment kit we have two of these tiny strange banded um, jigs here, tools, one for viola, one for violin, and the one for cello, there's one for strat cello and one for the montagnana, it depends on the length. And you also get a sound post setter, it's only for the 
the ones who are feeling today I want to move the sound post. <laughs> but you know, you always have to start one day. And believe me, when I was in the position that I had to put in the sound post, I was like, how the hell can you put this inside? But it's, 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 it, you have to start one day, okay? But it's always how deep you want to get into it. But for that case, I put it also inside a sound post fetcher, okay? Now it's, it's now inside, oh damn, I lost, I lost my sound post. It's somewhere in here. With this one, you can go in and you can pick it up and then, ah, oh, okay? <laughs> now then there's just this F hole and you have to go, and the one hand is missing, but then you can take it, okay? So I have even the sound post fetcher and then you have to look at another video which I made how to set the, the sound post, but this is a different thing. You, the sound post you have is already working, so it's only a question of how to put it in. And last thing is inside here, it is a light and a cable. Actually, now I don't have here the battery and everything, but this is a cable and this is, um, you plug it in, you can bend it, you can hang it inside the F-hole, and you, when you see, then it's much easier, okay? Now, I made this one because nowadays we all have a cell phone and then there's, there's the light, the flashlight, and then you start. But the cell phone is, I would say, is rather for pros because the cell phone, if you put it down here, it's in a, in a sudden that you push the bridge or things like this. So I would rather prefer you use something like this, okay? Um, I could talk about the sound post itself. Two, or th two days we talked already in a seminar. About the bridge with uh, Roger Hargrave, we were four days in Cremona, okay? And I think we didn't go all the way through it, okay? A base bar, I don't want to annoy you because it's really huge uh, matter and there's so many things about to talk about it, yeah? Um, one thing, I would say, let's keep things, uh, here in Austria we say we leave the, the church in the center of the town. And that's a little bit the tower of the church, okay? No, the, the sound post. On the other side, we have our base bar and we leave that just where it is. Let's say you have a, a violin and that happens very often, that the base bar is at the outside of the bridge or maybe even more outside and then you should put the sound post also like this. And that violin is incredibly cheap. And your student has to buy it because it's so cheap. But he will be unhappy and he will quit playing because if it is so far outside and the bass bar is so far out here, he will have difficulties to make this violin sound well. And for you, actually, it's just a question that you use these tiny tools and get a little bit more into it and just decide, okay, this violin is a great price, but this, the, the bass bar is in a position that we need a different bridge, for instance. And as soon as a violin maker would now make a bridge, which is here, you can buy it for violin makers in every measurement, a bigger size and at the very end when you use the tool it results correct, okay, then again your student will be very happy and for the price of a new bridge you make, you, you decide about the career of your students, yeah? You got the picture? It's very easy, right? And that's actually the key point of my, of my, uh, speech here for today. Now, there are so many things you have to consider that I'm now open for questions. Too much? Uh, how about the violas? Because they come in different sizes. I yes. Think. What, what are, how, how, how do you define the size being? Very, we, now we go into details, okay? Now, no, it's, it's, a, it's, it's an interesting question because even violin makers themselves sometimes don't know how to decide what side of bridge, if they have the instrument open, there are opinions in one or in another direction. 
where to put the bass bar at that point. And at that point, the violin maker can decide where to put it. And even about this, I made a very nice video. Um, it's all about that in that area of the instrument here, you have to imagine, the, the violin maker should imagine to put three circles from the edge of the lining towards the bass bar, from the bass bar to the outside of the sound post, from the south post to the lining of the C. You have three circles, which is not three times this distance, but three times the distance where it's a little bit more inside, right? So now, on a Montagnana, let's say, you know, even if you play the violin and you don't know anything about the cello, you know that the cello, a Montagnana cello, is large. You should actually put a larger bridge. And on a Strat cello, a little bit more skinny one, yeah? On a violin, Guarneri, Stradivari, when I make it, I always, with a, how do you call it, um, with a divider, I'm always playing in that position, and then turns out a measurement. And then certainly I have measurements for everything. For you, just as a beginner in this kind of matter, I would say on a violin, consider one millimeter inside the edge. On a viola, let's make it two. And on a cello, four, okay? But the point is for a student, the more he's beginner, the bigger you should actually have that distance. So on a small size instrument, you can make it one and a half, two millimeters, and it will tack, start immediately, will not be a big tone, but it will be very quick responding. And that's what the small kids need. They have a small bow, they don't have the power. The more you are professional, the more you are able to get everything out of that instrument and you actually perceive it as annoying if you get an instrument which is like shouting like crazy, like a beginner instrument, yeah? But for a beginner, that is exactly what they actually are looking for, yeah? So it's, it's all about the distance of the sound post and the bass bar. And the smaller it is, the more it is for a professional musician. And on a full-size violin, we are talking actually about less than a millimeter. But less than a millimeter, a millimeter here, a millimeter here, are already two millimeters, right? On a viola, if we have two millimeters and we make that one and a half millimeters between beginner and professional, it's three millimeters. It's a little bit, you go into the supermarket and you buy a six pack of beer, Gösa from Austria, and instead of carrying that beer, it's probably the best beer, right? Yes, she has to laugh. No, the other ones, they don't know that beer. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> Anyhow, if you're walking with your six pack back home, and you would walk like this, right? Nobody carries his beer like this. And it's all about that because the larger this distance is, is really heavy. And if you play, you have to put that energy in because this whole thing with the four strings up needs to move, you know? And when you put the bow and you're bowing, this is energy. So if it's a little bit larger already, instead of like this, it's like this, or instead of like this, it's like that, that makes a huge difference, okay? Now, for the viola, <laughs> then you have to go on my homepage and on the, on the YouTube channel and then uh, about the, um, the sizes and I have it somewhere um, written. You write me an email and I send you the measurements because in my workshop, in front of every working bench, we have all the data and all the measurements because the, the viola has a different measurement for every size. Like uh, here, it's, it's the, the neck is 13 centimeters. On the viola, we have it um, uh, 14, no, 13.8 something with starts and then it goes all the way to 15.2, 15.4, something like this, yeah? And then, so it's here different and then it becomes also here a little bit different, yeah? yeah? Where you put the bridge, you 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the same thing, yeah? Then it's like 22.2, 22.1, and like this. Yeah, that is depending on the size of the viola, yeah? Uh, yep, I'm, I'm actually pretty through it. There's one more thing since we are getting more and more into detail and I'm just wanting to opening up a little bit because sometimes if somebody, now let's say you have the issue that the sound post is too much outside and you have here the bass bar actually perfect. And then you say, hmm, maybe I can do it myself. And you can do it yourself. You take this small metal ruler. Now here, everything is falling down. And you need to push this one from here inside, right? And you can do that. You can do that. Now, I don't take it on this violin. I take this violin and do it here just to, in order that you can see how I do it and what noise it will make. Now, here, I put this inside. Certainly, on all my instruments, I do my best to have it on the perfect position, yeah? And now I say, this is for a beginner and it's an adult person who has never played the violin. If I know that, I take my ruler, I take this one here, and I, with, I keep this very whole, uh, very stable. It's not that I do like this and then, uh, no, not like this, okay? I put my fingers, I put the finger even on the edge, and then I just push it slightly. Yep. I'm actually, I think I have to loosen here the E and the A string slightly. I thought it was moving quicker and easier. Oops, I don't know if you could hear it. It was already moving. Now, if I'm going inside here, this was now, because I'm a little bit excited here, it was like one millimeter, okay? Now we are pretty much inside, yeah? But one thing is for sure, it will immediately start playing. Then we tune it up again and we try it and it's immediately quicker responding. Um, just have to remember that I did it here. Um, the only thing you can move is the sound post. The bass bar is glued in, right? Pushing it a little bit inside, a little bit, is possible and you can do that. It's just if you push too much and the, the arching is a little bit like this, then it will fall down. But since the strings are still pulled up, you don't really risk too much, okay? We're talking here not about the Stradivari in your hands, we're talking about student instruments, mainly made in China, or maybe it's already graded up for a German-made instrument or something like this, okay? If it is too much inside and we have the opposite way, that you have something like this, and here's the bass bar, it's pretty annoying for the student, right? This here is the bass bar and this is the sound post and it is like this, let's say. Then you need to get with the sound post setter inside and it has this nice shape to fetch it and then you push it out, yeah? And that's the same thing. Now I hope I don't pull it out like one centimeter. No, <laughs> let me see here. This is pretty easy here. You take this one. If you want to see better, you put the light inside. Now I do it like this. First I check it how it is. You don't need to do it in one hip. You can also do it in five steps if you want. You put it inside without damaging the F hole too much. And then you can squeeze it also here a little bit to help that it is a little bit easier. Did you hear it? Yeah, yeah? okay. Very good hall here, it's like in the arena. Huh? <laughs> and then here, now you can see, oh, and it is nicely outside again, okay? So in the beginning, you need to do it in order to, be, to become better on it, and then you tune it up, you play it a little bit, and you will immediately hear the difference, okay? Now, the difference 
is in any case there will be a difference. And what I said is that if you push it out, the sound will be bigger, right? And it will respond more difficult, okay? If the distance is larger, the arm becomes larger, the whole vibration becomes bigger, and the sound becomes bigger. If the whole thing is more inside, the, it's smaller, it's more quicker responding, but the sound, even if you really push hard, up to a certain level, you cannot increase anymore. I think it's very logic, right? Yeah? Um, Actually, the, 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 the subject itself, to have an instrument like this, sounding like this, or a cello like this, it's, there's so many ingredients and so many things which are important that now um, I, I don't feel like this. Then the, the whole thing is not anymore named ESTA um, annual meeting, then it becomes a violin making uh, course which lasts more than a week. Uh, of course, everything influences the final result. So if we talk now, I didn't talk about the thickness, how you see this is too thin. Uh, the thickness of the bridge, for instance, for a beginner, if it's in the upper part a little bit thicker, is a little bit better because it's a little bit more stable. Uh, even here underneath the feet, if they're a little bit thicker. Now, on the level I'm working, I have it always 4.2 millimeters, but then I should give you a caliper and then you start measuring. And there are certain measurements, of course, for everything. There's nothing, if you make it in a certain level, there is no measurement without having measured. If this one would be less than 0.8, it would make a, a side noise, which is vibrating, vibrating, uh, vibrating on the top and is also not good. If these feet are too large, this material in the, in the between is actually the, the, the vibrating material. If these feet are 14 millimeters, you're damping the, but we go into details which too much for you, okay? It's, that's something for the violin maker and the, different level, it's, um, it doesn't, it's not, it, if, we too, if we make it too, uh, too difficult for you, you don't bring home anything. I, I would just say, start doing it, and if you have some questions, first go to my channel. I have certainly made a, a video about this specific matter, and then maybe we meet up again, and then we can go into details, yeah? Yes, it's broken. Uh, to be honest, uh, if, if I see it's broken, then I make a new bridge. And I, I didn't make any research now if we just um, uh, plop it away, if it is any better. Um, one thing I certainly made research is that I took this arm away. And you will see how it is super loud immediately because you have to think that here where the string lies it goes these here go like this like an x and all this from here down here is now if i say superficial this is tough other makers would now um, uh, criticize me but you could actually make it thinner here and it would change the voice of an instrument. If it is, for instance, if the edge here, they didn't make a camphor um, and you make a camphor, immediately opens up the sound. If they didn't work out this part here, this area here of the bridge, but you, you have to imagine that a, a cheap economic instrument, you cannot now dedicate that much time to make 
the bridge as it's best. Some people do it, they buy it for 300 euro a Chinese instrument, dedicate a lot of time and sell it for 3,000. Uh, you know, you can, it, it's a little bit like buying a, a, don't want to criticize now a car, but a Fiat Panda, and then you invest everything and you do everything, and then it turns out, and one day it will become a Ferrari, okay? But it's just, it, it's, it, it will be always what it has been, yeah? So you have to a little bit also uh, dedicate the most precious thing we have in life, which is time, and then you just say, okay, we do it quick but good, okay? You can still make affordable instruments good sounding. And I think with this meta here, you can do magic, okay? If you have students who have some issues that they're, they have difficulties with the G-string, on the G-string you see, you hear it immediately that they have difficulties to get a nice G-string, then you can make them happy with adjusting that immediately, yeah? No, I have many questions. <laughs> you have many? Um, the bridge is for half violins. I yes. Mean, Yeah. And when they come to lessons, they come here to bridge and at the bridge. <laughs> they, <laughs> so, so, so they fit. Uh -huh. Then I think, okay, no problem. I will take the bridges. And I, I bought a lot of bridges, but they are, they are, you know, the pro bridges. They are like thick and very even. Uh -huh. And it's like, I cannot put this. It's like a piece of wood. Is it something I can do to, or is it, is it kind of work for a professional to? I think for, for, for you as a teacher, it's difficult to, to get into it. Um, so I should take it uh, for a while in a Yes. Uh, I, I, I would say, yeah. I, if I start now to, to explain you how to adapt the bridge, I think it's not very professional from my side to, to give you advice about it. Um, but they are, they are too high and they are too thick and they are not like the feet are not like they are. Not they're not adapted, so the, the whole yeah. thing doesn't work because if the feet doesn't adapt to the top, and it somewhere touches here, and then the base bar is here, it results like the base bar is actually outside, yeah? yeah? So it needs to be adapted. I use usually lipstick, I put it on the surface on the, on the top of the violin, then I put the bridge exactly in the right position, and then take it off, and then with a chisel, I take it away, I re-put it, and things like this, but I think this is a little bit too much now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that means they usually people buy on eBay the most economic instrument and then they get all the parts and then they don't know how to put together. Then they go to the maker and then the maker says, ah, you bought it on email. Ah, you bought it on email. Yes. <laughs> and then, you know, <laughs> somehow like this, but you know, um, and then they have to, to do as a fine, they have to pay twice as the violin just for setting it correctly up. No. Um, it's easy to sell like this, yeah? It's, it's again, the, the major part here on the violin is to have, to dedicate the right time to make things so that they tap in the perfect way and it fits all together and uh, like this. Some more questions? I have like the impression that I'm talking two hours here. No, it's not, I'm pretty good in time. First time in my life I didn't go over too much. Some more questions? So then we would say, perfect lecture. Hmm? Perfect lecture. Perfect lecture. Maybe another time. Oh, okay. So I was well prepared, right? <laughs> okay. So I would say, Stefan, we can say bye bye here and you can cut down. Yeah. Ciao, ciao to our friends over there. Hand claps. Huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs>